Uh, I am from Greece, yes. Oh, oh, it looks sunny there, it's in the middle of the day. Yeah, but I'm not in Greece, I live in Tallinn, Estonia, for a few oh. years now. Yeah, but I am from what's, Greece. What's it like over there at the moment? Are you guys in lockdown and things, or is it...? Uh, now they lifted things up for, for a while, maybe. They're going to bring them back in a few months, who knows. It's a uh, turn-on, turn-off, switch lights situation. It, I mean. It's stayed away here at the moment, so, I mean, there's hope. Like, at least things are happening, I suppose, in the world. And mm -hmm. It's hard to remember over here because there's such a big thing, and it was here as well. And then when it's gone for a while, eh, it's like it's over here, no one's really thinking about it as much anymore, other than what you, know, you see overseas. I mean, obviously, okay. we all hope it you know, doesn't <laughs> go bad for anyone. Now, are you the cover artist? Are you on some of the books? Well, I do my own series, uh, which was uh, pitched by Rising Sun Comics back in 2018. Uh, my series is called Steel Cat Metal Team. It's like a three art, 12 issue series, science fiction, superheroes, and supernatural stuff going on. And I'm doing the second art now. And uh, for uh, Aru, I do PJ at CP, the, the comic strip, as well as the, the first Templeton book called Torn. I it saw was, your ass on that. That was real cool. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, he, he's really, you know, um, Aru or Malfunction, I, uh, you know, he, he's so, he's such a creative mind, he has so many things to do, he, he, he's in charge of the, of um, Rising Sun Oceania, I plant studios, he has, he has written all these stories, and uh, he has uh, a vision, so many projects, and uh, I wish him the best because he writes very wonderful uh, stories, I would say. Awesome. So, yeah, yeah. With with your own story you did, did you do the art and the writing? Yes. Yes, and I do oh. everything by hand. That would have taken a while. <laughs> it, it does take a while, but I constantly promote it so people don't forget about it. And Have you got any of it there? Any work? Uh, I have to go it? on. I've been on the website. Like, I've seen the overseas stuff because I've seen the Oceania stuff before. And I've checked out the website on the whole. I saw the G.I. Joe fan comics and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some good art in the armadillos. Mm -hmm, they, mm -hmm. they were they were pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are. They have many great titles too, and some good collaborations with other studios like Red Hat in Studios and the like. But uh, yeah, my books are up there still. Um, and uh, I, I learned last month that uh, they were they, they, they were all sold out, all the remaining copies at shops. So that was good news. And now we talk awesome. about yeah. Now we talk about reprints, maybe a trade paperback for the first four issues, like Arc One. So that is something to look forward to. Oh, that's really cool. So did you have a print run that you had as a goal, and then you've managed to sell them all? Yeah, it was like. Um, uh, I have had two print uh, printings of issue one, and uh, I think of the yeah the other books too. So they were also sold out to like two times already. Awesome. So, yeah, that's gotta feel good. <laughs> it it does feel good because it's so much work. You know, my my hands sometimes I don't recognize them for because I do everything by hand. It's uh, it yeah, can, of course. Can, <laughs> yeah, and many hours and many dabs. You know, you, artists can be creators can be harsh on themselves uh, quite often. So, but it, it, it's rewarding, it's rewarding. And of course I can do better and I'm growing, you know, I get better at drawing and writing. It's like a learning process too. And I have learned quite a lot about the, the comic book industry and the medium uh, through Hawk Sanders, the, the editor and CEO, if I remember well, yeah. And Aru here, now he gives me the opportunity to illustrate his projects, which is great. Um, you know, it, it's it's an ongoing what process. What would you for... say with with your personal project, like mm -hmm. because you know how I said before, like I I feel for a creative person, getting that out there, doing doing it and getting it in the hands of one person, in a way is an achievement. Yeah, it's not the job and the finances and all that, but for you, like what was your your main goals? Like was that a big part of your first project or not so much your driver? <laughs> Uh, my goal was, uh, and it still is, to, take, to, to get these stories out there uh, and many people to come and read them. And I guess all the other things like financial support that they like follow right after. But I want as many people to read the stories as possible 
you know that's my look at, yeah it's creating really that's yeah but sometimes mm -hmm. with creating we talk about like the money and the control and all that but when you're creating something i think for a creative person that's normally the core driver mm -hmm. yeah i mean money is good too i mean you want to be rewarded oh, for all it. your life <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially when it comes to comics but uh you know, I think the the first type of reward that comes to mind is for people to read it and like it. I I, I mean that's my first goal. Did yeah. you get any letters and things like about it? The reviews? I have, I, yeah, I have gotten some reviews and feedbacks through the social media uh, and uh, phone calls or emails, and uh, they are all uh, positive so far. Um, uh, of course, if you see my current artwork with Arc One's art, you know it has been improved uh, even more. And the editor and my and, and the viewers and readers can recognize that too. So that shows me that I do something right, I guess. So, um, how but, did the uh, first review feel? Like the first time someone uh, said, "I read your book," and I that would have been pretty special. Oh man, yeah. I mean, I remember also that one was uh, from the U.S. from Utah. Someone from there actually bought the whole arc at once and started reading it that every time he would finish a book he would make a review with uh, the pictures of the books on his desk and that was very uh, heartwarming for me you know it's like uh, very touching and it, it feels like okay it's worth it you know no matter the labor and the hours and I want to say the stories otherwise I would have huge regrets you know even if they wouldn't do so well as far as I'm able to put them out there you know and you got but, all the way to the states yeah, states in New Zealand, so <laughs> that is something. And I have Greeks, I mean, uh, learning about the company and the stories because uh, either through my social media or the Comic Con we ha used to have in my hometown, which now has been postponed since last year. Hopefully, it will come back. So, yeah. With your um, did did you go to school to learn to draw or write or like did you do any formal uh, stuff with it or did you just kind of learn yourself? Well, uh, let's say that the school played a huge role uh, into learning how to write and of course reading. I love reading different types of books and of course I, I'm a comic book fan collector. Uh, and then I I attended uh, five years uh, university. School of Fine Arts, my hometown. I graduated, uh, and, but I always wanted to do comics. Uh, comics in Greece, so they have a, a big scene, bigger at least from Estonia. Um, it, it is not considered yet like uh, an academic fine art. I was going to ask, when you said fine arts, did when you had your teachers and stuff, and you said you want to do comics, were they like, <laughs> that's, yeah. As I, uh, I studied animation, and they hated comics, superheroes, uh, like. <laughs> no, that's even more weird. That's even more weird because animation is part of the pop culture, like comics. Like, <laughs> while in my school, we had some people who were recognizing it as an artwork and others who said, ah, no, it's not art. Are you kidding me? <laughs> How you can do it then? You have to know. <laughs> I mean, anyway. Uh, but usually we have people who open their, up their own schools to go and, and learn, uh, you know, how the comic book uh, medium. But mm. I, I'm self-taught, basically. Uh, in, in, and then I have learned even more through the publisher I'm working with. So, yeah, it's like I lost... the love of comics. Oh, yeah. Being yeah. surrounded by them, like you'd be drawing them and stuff. What kind of comics do you like? So, I mean, you, you're a collector too? Naturally. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, the, my first comics were Disney titles. So I like um, cartoon-like uh, characters like uh, the Disney characters, Garfield, the Snoopy, you know, the comic strips, I like them a lot. Uh, it, you know, they were on the newspapers, they were making it boring for me, uh, you know, a piece of paper with text, more a little appealing because of the strips. And then it was the superheroes, you know, first because of the animated series like Spider-Man, Batman in the 90s. And then I started learning more about the big publishers and others like Dark Horse Image, and then more indie companies and then comic books from all over the world. Not only, I mean, from India, from Africa, from uh, the, the Baltic states, from uh, the Scandinavian uh, nations, uh, you know, it's... Uh, from all over the world, and of course from the Greek community too. And even here in Estonia, they have some creators, but the scene is so, so small right now. Yet uh, I love learning about comic book works and creators from all over the world. It's I think it's amazing, the storytelling. I love saying stories since an early age, and I found comics to be the most fitting medium for me. So, yeah. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I dabble in comics. I think a lot of people who grow up liking comics and animation, they have a taste for comics. They, like most people, I think, lean to art or lean to, you know, they have that creative aspect, I find. Like, because uh, I went, when I went to animation school, you know, half of them were big manga fans or, you know, comic fans wanting to draw superheroes and things. And, um, yeah, I've always find it's kind of like a scene, you know, like the, the, the type of people were similar. And that's what's good about the community, I feel, is like, it's quite, um, well, it's inclusive and enjoying, just enjoying the art form and and what it is. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is he coming back or? Uh... I, I don't know, he might, I, I run the, the, well, comic group over here, like one of them, there's a few in New Zealand, um, mm -hmm. and it's just a collector's group because um, before I started doing it, um, which I started with zero people, and we got like a, 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 the biggest one now here, um, but it, there wasn't anything really bringing everyone together. You know, there are people selling stuff, but you didn't really do the community thing. But like like you said, with branching out and meeting people in the different areas in your city and your country is really cool. Like it's it's amazing that they are out there. And it's, you know, even though you can spend your whole life in, in, in a town and go, no one likes comics here. There's no shops. There's no one to talk to about it. <laughs> and then, you know, when you get people together or have a call to action, you know, a place where they can go, it's real exciting because you, you suddenly make new friends and contacts, and, mm -hmm. you know, share stories or interests. And maybe collaborations can come out from it too for a project. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so New Zealand, but uh, I mean, uh, you do have some uh, conventions going on. So it's not like it, comics are completely unfamiliar thing. No, but when you go to a convention, though, normally it's either back in the day, it used to be very quiet here, like more like a garage sale and you're flicking through the books and looking for your treasure. You might go there with friends, but mm -hmm. you're not really socializing so much. You might be able to meet artists and things and go, you know, have a chat and sign stuff, but you're not really developing a, a community as such. And now you've got the opposite where you've got the real big events where it's all about the money and it's not necessarily as focused on, you know, one aspect. And, um, it, likewise, it's very hard to make p connections there, you know, like maybe if you're a superstar cosplayer or you're a really outgoing person, you network well, but it's more of a networking exercise rather than a friendly community um, thing. Yeah, that's the other aspect of it, like that makes it like sometimes makes me wonder, you know, like, no, makes me thinking why it could be more simple. I mean, I had to join the social media just back in 2017 in order to let people know of my work. I just want to draw. I don't want to do this stuff <laughs> to continue promoted, pre you know, but at the same time, I learned, some, I take something from it, all these experiences. I grow in this manner, too. So giving interviews, talking with other people, maybe it helps me get out from myself. So maybe it's not mm. that bad. So. You do learn, like, because I don't know how long you've been doing the um, screen time thing and the chat. When I first did it, I was freaked out and I was just looking at myself and go and you, you do it 10 times and it becomes more normal like it's still sometimes you just go and it's you look at yourself and you go it's a bit weird but you, you get more comfort and it is a skill you know like and sadly in this day and age I mean it's almost a necessity but it's like if if I was a producer or something and I was hiring you and I was in a different country I probably want to talk to you like this and go Hey, there you are, you know, kind of thing. And yet, you know, naturally, we're not very good at it. You know, not everyone's going to be comfortable at it or trained or feel feel natural or be able to talk. And so it, it is a, a good skill. I think these days, like, um, we've got a big opportunity with everything. So when Ari was saying, oh, it's our opportunity as indie developers, it's the opportunity for creators because creators in, like, pretty much every aspect, like um, what Mark was saying, the animation tools and things, like, there's a lot of things coming available that used to be very specialized or expensive or you need formal training, where nowadays you, if you create, you're doing half the work, you know, like, you've got a lot of tools to help you um, get out there. The the marketing bit's hard, you know, like because getting a crowd and I think Mark was kind of talking about that is because you just got to build momentum and that he mentioned, who mentioned the comic strip where the girls were all consistent and does it every week and have a same caliber mm -hmm. and they say that with um, 
selling stuff as well. You just got to be consistent, yes. consistent, and keep on putting it out there. So you keep on being fresh and new, and people can get used to you. And it's not that every single one of those times you sell something or someone you get a new customer, but the fact that you're repeating it, you've got all this backlog, you've got all this history where when someone does join, they they join in, and so like Aru and yourself doing your work is is you just got to kind of steam through. I think a lot of the successful creators in um, comics and other areas say, I, I wasn't making it at this point at all, and I'd done Spider-Man, and I'd done Batman, no one knew who I was, and I did this, and then people love me, and then I've got my own, you know, character. And so that they used to say that in art school, when I did animation, that you've just got to kind of, you, you're doing it to, because you love it, and it doesn't, the money shouldn't matter initially, like, because sometimes it's not guaranteed. Like, yeah, a lot of people do those kind of uh, volunteer kind of jobs, you know, intern stuff mm -hmm. to, to get, and they get there eventually, but they might have done 10 years of <laughs> filling coffees and filing papers and photocopying, yeah. but they got some experience as well and contacts. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the, uh, where people bring us an example, Jack Kirby. Oh, you know, he made it in his 40s, so it's never too late to have your big break at some point. <laughs> so He's yeah. been going since he was 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey, sorry, I was I had to take some time out. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But that's, that's, I mean, like, taking off from what the point was, like, you know, okay, to have him made a put... Um, and suddenly making up to 10 years of work. But I mean, that's why it's so ridiculous to see people who've never done comics get dosed. It's a shame oh. because people are missing yeah. out on opportunities if, if they don't deserve it. Some of them probably yeah. do deserve it. Some of them might blow you out the water and go, wow, they had no skill, but they've actually done this amazing thing. Mm -hmm. But it's a shame if you've worked really hard and you deserve the opportunity, but because you're not X, Y, Z, you're, you're not what they want at the moment. Yeah, and that's that's a set state of what where we are at the moment. Anyway, uh, so hopefully um, Constantino's talked about his uh, projects. We were having a real nice talk. I was really enjoying cool. meeting him. It was cool. Yeah, no, he's a, he's a, he's he's a real good talent, and I was really surprised um, the work he did on PJ and Shibi. And if you look at the artwork there, uh, it's just yeah, you know uh, the the I mean the three panels each time the amount of work he puts into because I don't have to tell him to do too much to it. That's the thing. I'll just go, this is th this panel, this happens, these are my scripts. And you know, this is the, uh, this is the speech bubbles that have to go on there. And I'm really proud of PJ and Chevy. Uh, I think um, that's, that's something that I never thought about doing because I mean, I grew up reading Garfield and Oblix, you know, and Asterix, the cartoon styles that I grew up on, you know, and then on the opposite side of that, I grew up reading 2000 AD right at the same freaking time so so it's um for me it's just hand in hand that's why i think um the division between comic styles is just silly uh, um but yeah i think um the work that he puts into uh pj and shibi is really good and if you guys go to plungecomics.com and you click on that pj and shibi button you'll find we've got i think it's like 19 um for the first volume we've finished we're yeah. going to come back once i start you know I've planned out the next lot of series um, um, runs can on you that. Do, can you do screen share? I can't. Sorry, I don't know how to do it on these things. That's the problem with these things. Amateur. I know. <laughs> I haven't done, I haven't done uh, StreamYard for... I, I think I should. what I should do is get get these printed out. I'll get them all printed out for um, to show people. Maybe he's got some. I have so some original art here or, if you want to see. Yeah. Oh, awesome. I'd love to. Yeah. Well, so I, 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 I do the write up, I get the scripts done, and then he goes, does and does the artwork. Bring it closer, cons. Can you bring it closer? Yeah. So that's oh, that's them nice. sitting around, um, around the table talking about something. Um, <laughs> oh, what had to do with this? That had to do with this. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, they had to do oh, with that. Cut in the hat. Yeah. yeah so the you see, and it's just a for paper, and I, you know, I just start drawing by reading the script. Yeah. So. Yeah. So if you look at that, I mean, that's just me going. Okay. Uh, and th this is he's in this room. 
it says bedroom can you put a couple posters of such and such on the back and then can you uh and then i'll give him the text and that's, he's looking at him this way and so on so a lot of work the artwork that he does on this is amazing and i really love that's pj and she before that because the artwork yeah. that that's done on that and i think um I mean, it does have that like my... serial feel from like the newspaper clips like yeah and that's that was what from the for. very first that was from the very first uh, sketches i did for the characters yeah. we have developed them more than since then but yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah so. i mean i i had to basically go okay uh this is what i want this is what i want let's change this let's keep this and do that and because i'm a designer and not an artist uh well slash artist uh I, I, I like to think look a certain way when people look at it or when I look at it. So I want to make sure that, um, you know, when you see a, a three panel, um, a three panel story, it has a start, a middle and an end. And, but then if we do a series, which we do, sometimes we do about seven, six or seven, we did one where she went for, uh, where she'd be the main co-title, um, you know, the daughter of PJ she wanted to get a she needs to get a job dad's a, dad's very rich all right the dad's very rich yeah, he's inherited a lot of money but the dad also we're going to find out he had to work on his own because he decided to not live off his laurels right of his parents money either mm -hmm. so then he's trying to instill in his daughter that she needs to work as well because what's the point of freaking um you know what's the point of just being handed everything which is nice right that's it, a whole idea of like i'll do a couple of things and i don't have to worry about anybody paying me for it it's like mom and dad paying for all my um tuition and then i'll just sit down and just not do anything with it right and so i think that's where i'm trying to go with uh with pj's store up uh, shibi's story is basically try to say this is an 18 year old kid or something like that who's just coming out of college and what is she gonna do and it's basically like my, me what was i doing i don't i was out of school at about freaking 16. Or 15 you know what am i going to do i went and did a whole bunch of courses and then i went and i think my parents pushed me out of the nest and said go live with your uncle and then when i was looking to live with my uncle it was like i need to earn more money pay the bills whatever my uncle wants rent money so and so on you know and you got to start and the problem was like how do you do that in a comic book without using people but using real modern things so the whole, I think PJ and Shibi has a really nice, um, the artwork is great. I, I, I must say, I really like where we've come from when we started. Like the photos, I mean, basically when they started, they were just photos of toys I owned. And I said, mm. yeah, this is what, you know, can, you, can, you, can you work with this? You know, come up with something. And then he comes back and I go, okay, hmm, let's, uh, let's change a few things okay let's let's put a necklace saying see she be so we know when she comes on you know it's her see she be or and then we go we have a black sheep and we go oh i've got a cut oh, who's from australia so okay i've got a cousin who actually lives in australia let's make him this character okay yeah. and then i'll make this character this character in my family so it's kind of like a wider look of my own personal um you know family base um and then try to Pull out things from what we've been through in our past or going through in the currently or whatever or might go in the future but basically how do you relate these two families who do two different idea who have two different ideals you know you've got someone who's an activist um you know and but is bringing up a 10 year old kid who's a gamer and so on and how do you come i haven't even delved into jojo's story right now jojo bear you know it's like uh or bunny whatever his name is i can't remember you know and uh, baba baba right yeah. like baba black sheep right yeah, so, yeah yeah so it's kind of like playing around on these characters i think i i for me i, I want to you know i want to be able to say in a few years time when we actually have a nice lot of um you know collection of these um these three ish um you know three, three panel yeah. three panel uh, comics strips mm -hmm. into a you know where we can actually make animations out of them, you know. Um, that's oh, what I was talking yeah. about with Mark about saying, "Hey, 
because they look animated style why not make those I think that he animated yeah. his, his ads for him were like mildly yeah. animated how they got those effects and it did add to yeah. it because it leans towards animation the style and then yeah. when he had the movement there i was i was quite impressed i was like well yeah. you can see it going the next step it's not doing yeah. that but it's giving you that taste and yeah they totally can with those kind of characters yeah but not with only phoebe I mean, in that is it has it got a comedic angle because when I see a strip it's, like Garfield and stuff, I yeah, feel like does, looking at it, I, I, I'd expect a joke and comedy. Yeah, but there, from, is a bit of a, there is a bit of a part to it. There's punchlines in it. Uh, but they're also, because nobody knows who these characters are, I'm still trying to bring a bit of their past into it. Like we talked about like how, uh, you know, the last one I think we did, or the last couple we did, where, um, uh, oh, geez. Uh, Baba, what well, Dad Baba was basically, uh, you know, Stormy, Stormy Baba, right? The black sheep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he was basically chucked out of Australia, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and thrown back into feet uh, into New Zealand uh, as a, a, you know, and now he's. We need to t talk about his backstory. How? What the hell is he doing in New Zealand, right? And so on. And we've done. We've sorted out who, uh, you know, the other family. Um, you know, the main family, PJ and Shibi, um are alike and what their family's about but now we're trying to deal with these guys so you're still trying to um balance telling the story making a bit of humor um putting your point across and then not only that giving you an idea of who they are as well and i and i have like i said i haven't dealt with the jojo baba yet i think jojo's a really cool character i think oh yeah he's, he's, he's gonna have a lot of fun he's, he's based on one of my nephews so hopefully we can put a bit of cheekiness to him soon mm. but yeah, um, i like drawing him yeah he's, he's you know he's your average um 10 year old with the headphones with you know baggy jeans and you know doing his computer gaming stuff and he's he questions you know he hears his things like how come everybody else gets to behave badly on internet but i'm not allowed to dead yeah you yeah know? exactly <laughs> well that's because you know blah you know and it's, it's it's all these questions you ask that kids ask so with them and that's where i want to go with jojo with where she be like i said it's about her growing up um uh, and then we're gonna i'm um, looking at going into his um with PJ's business. We haven't gone into his business. We've gone to his mum, um, his wife's, uh, Kiara, Kira. Yeah, uh, yeah, Kira. Yeah. So Kira uh, Gray, she's like a former model from Alaska, right? Now she's in her forties, you know. And um, so she's she's basically out there um, as a business, very very good businesswoman, you know, doing a thing. And so we've placed those three but now also i mean um michaela who's the mother the rabbit mother of jojo uh you know and she's an activist right so how do we deal with her doing those things and still trying to raise a family as well and it's it's fun i think uh, that's the thing about comic strips it's it's fun uh, mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta try to uh, play around with what they're doing but you know um it's kind of me putting a bit of my humor into it that most people don't see because all they see me is talking a lot of serious shit, you know, and they see me as a serious person, but they don't see me having my joke arounds with people and my friends going to, you know, gaming game nights once every two weeks and, you know, doing being silly, playing cards, cards versus humanity and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But then then you've got the other side where we go really uh into delving into the manga uh, things that i love like supernatural stuff i think did you talk about constantina templeton yeah i just uh, said i like the art <laughs> yeah i do really like that art that's the first art i saw that you did yeah yeah that templeton, did. <laughs> templeton's really really interesting because like i said it was based around constantine and him yeah. because i like the story of and the and the graphic not on um, the comic series about when he went to australia there's a story where he went to australia and with the aboriginal people there and that was that's one story that really stuck with me and i thought what if i could bring constantine into fiji mm. and deal with the deal with the really rich history of uh god and uh and uh, of both sides of the of, of the cultures there our main, cult, main main two cultures there uh 
Fijian and Indian. And so you bury uh, the Indian culture uh, with their gods and demigods, so uh, Krishna, Ram, and all that. And then you've got all the other Fijian uh, gods and their own histories of that. And I was like, how do I deal with this? Um, and so that that's actually in uh, the third, the second volume, but not, but, um, but not, but which is the third one along. And so that got written first, and then I went with, came back into the first one after the second one. So I think, um, yeah, it's, and then, then just recently, I mean, like I hadn't put any guns on them and stuff like that because I've been watching a lot of anime and stuff, and I love props. Like I really love props. I like, you know, I love, I love freaking, uh, you know, weaponry. I've always loved weapons and stuff because, and if you look at uh, like even in um, old cultures and stuff, there's always weapons. We, you know, we're made out of wood, made out of you know uh, stone and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I always, um, you know, I always like the idea of things you can hold that can be helpful as well as weaponry like swords and sorcery and stuff like that and so um you know we've got these i want to go i don't want to go too much into it but there's you know because it'll give away a lot of the finale of it all but um i think um you know a base i had to change the character from looking too too european indian to maybe a bit more uh I don't know, a bit more rugged looking. I didn't want him, like, it, actually, no, he actually looked too clean. When we did the first 10 pages, he looked yeah, very yeah. clean. I don't like the clean look of him because I did like how um, Constantine grew up, right? He's like mm -hmm. in his 60s or something by the time they pulled, his, pulled the plug on the 300 comics. And mm -hmm. I liked how he, grew, he got older and older and he got rugged, all the chain smoking, got into his, you know, and I wanted that. and. So I, you know, I sent through some uh, images and stuff of sketches that I've done, uh, of photos uh, based on photos of actual person, right, from New Zealand, who's an actor. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I need to, I need to make it, you know, give someone who actually looks like this, to, you know, and so, yeah, and then so, Const, um, has been working on that. Um, but we've got, I mean the idea of what we do with what we're putting out i mean like the next thing we're putting out right is this basically so you know yeah. uh pretty good and and so that's kickstarter and like that's why i liked asking the questions i did i mean wanted to ask the question that with mark was that because he's already done kickstarter he's on a second or third now and i want to know how that all works out because this is our first one and you know you don't want to fail on the first one right because mm -hmm. that's just sort of bums you out because you just like take three steps back when you try you know take try and take one step forward and i think um you hopefully probably can't let it defeat you either well, of course i mean so you if know, you didn't know then you just have to ride through it there's the people who give up are the ones who just stop and so you, and you, you have to get anything done if you give up that's the thing like the juggernaut what's that sorry you have to be like the 